how can they survive underground? These are no ordinary flowers. Wait. Umbrella. What? What was Umbrella do? I don't know. It doesn't look like anyone's been around for a while. You can be sure they wanted to keep this place a secret. Some of this equipment's got the Triso logo on it. Are they working together? The Umbrella Corporation was the organization that was behind many of the events we see depicted in the Resident Evil franchise. However, a combination of the corporation's stock prices plummeting and the revelation of the corporation's responsibility for the viral outbreak in Raccoon City eventually led to its downfall. What resulted afterwards was the rise of other organizations seeking to fill the void of the manufacture and selling of BOWs, or bioorganic weapons, for profit. We will be exploring some of these organizations here, as well as some of the key players affiliated with the organization. Special shout out to Silvalum's Knight for suggesting some of the individuals who will be discussed in this video. Welcome to episode 7 of my lore exploration, Morally Dubious Resident Evil Characters, Tricell. Tricell, as it came to be known in the modern era, first emerged in the 1960s as a conglomerate of three departments whose origins can be traced back to the various exploits of Travis Trading Enterprises. This company's successes included trade with Asia, which proved to be profitable and served to help the establishment of the shipping department. Henry Travis, one of the members of the Travis family, was said to have been inspired by David Livingstone, a real-life explorer of Africa. Travis embarked on a total of five expeditions, funded thanks to the financial power of his family. He would come to document his observations on animals, plants, minerals, culture, and history in a massive compendium 72 volumes long called the Natural History Conspectus. Much to his chagrin, his publication was met with skepticism. He passed away not long after his work had been published. Why was Henry Travis's massive work largely met with doubt? It's believed that his older brother spread a rumor about the publication being fictional because of a concern that other individuals outside of Travis Trading Enterprises would use the information in the conspectus to obtain potentially valuable resources in Africa. Travis Trading used the information in Henry's publication to locate and profit from various resources in the continent, such as oil and gas, predominantly in the 19th century. These endeavors led to the creation of the Resources Development Department. The company also collected various organisms, primarily in the 20th century. From these organisms, materials were extracted and used to create medicines, leading to the formation of the Pharmaceutical Department. In the 1960s, a decision was reached to form a conglomerate amongst the shipping, resources development, and pharmaceuticals departments, and for the company to be renamed Tricell. Notably, one of the observations documented in the conspectus piqued the interest of Oswald Spencer, one of the founders of the Umbrella Corporation. Specifically focusing on the Nidapaya tribe, Spencer used the information in the publication which ultimately led to the progenitor flower, and therefore the progenitor virus, to be obtained. More on this later. Discussion of Tricell must also encompass the collective of pharmaceutical companies called the Pharmaceutical Industry Association, or the Global Pharmaceutical Consortium, in the English localization of the RE series. The Umbrella Corporation was a member of this association, with the implication of Umbrella's involvement in the Raccoon City incident, lawsuits began to be filed, and it came to light that the other members of the group had been unwittingly commissioned by Umbrella to take part in various steps of BOW development. As such, with the threat of ruin, if found to be at least partially responsible for the Raccoon City incident and the death of 100,000 people, 
The remaining members of the association vowed to take a plea bargain with the prosecution, eagerly offering sensitive information that would all but ensure Umbrella's conviction. The prosecutors agreed to this and focused their efforts on the corporation, leading to Umbrella's collapse soon after they had been found to be responsible for the raccoon incident. The remaining members of the Pharmaceutical Industry Association likely thought that the impact of this scandal had been largely behind them. However, this thought would quickly evaporate thanks to the emergence of BOWs around the world, largely via black market transactions. It was at this time that the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, or BSAA, was founded. At first, their capability was mainly limited to observation of anti-bioterrorism missions conducted by law enforcement of the concerned nation or region. However, the threat of BOWs was becoming an ever-increasing and worldwide issue, leading to the BSAA's restructuring as a more highly functioning organization under the United Nations. This expansion led to the majority of member nations, approximately 70%, allowing for the alliance to function with virtually no restrictions within their borders and with the remaining countries allowing the alliance to conduct operations with some restrictions. Intriguingly, the majority of the BSAA's funding comes from the Pharmaceutical Industry Association, and this was not without criticism given the membership of the Umbrella Corporation prior to its collapse, as well as the emergence of BOWs in various regions throughout the world. However, it could be said that the funding from the association was necessary and facilitated the reorganization of the BSAA. Notably, Tricell is one of the members of this association. Resident Evil Degeneration, a CG movie in the same canon as the games, depicts a harrowing reunion between Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy, the two protagonists of Resident Evil 2. Set in 2005, we get to see a glimpse of not only the two protagonists seven years after their experience in surviving the horrors of Raccoon City, but we also get a sense of life after Umbrella. As stated before, a void in the BOW industry had been created after Umbrella's collapse. Curtis Miller, a character depicted in the movie, lost his wife and daughter in Raccoon City and had vowed to expose the truth of the government's involvement in the incident. Miller had also been a member of TerraSave, a human rights organization, which was a vocal opponent of Will Pharma, a pharmaceutical company that had been responsible for the creation of a vaccine for the T-virus. TerraSafe's concerns centered on Will Pharma's trials conducted on people in India. Intriguingly, TerraSafe distanced themselves from Miller due to his violent and criminal tactics against the pharmaceutical company. Throughout the events of the movie, it was revealed that Frederick Downing, a head researcher of Will Pharma, was formerly a researcher of the Umbrella Corporation who had stolen samples of the T and G viruses and had been shopping around for potential buyers. In addition, Curtis Miller had infected himself with the G virus in a desperate attempt to quote, reveal the irrefutable truth. Senator Ron Davis was a supporter of Wolf Pharma. At the end of Degeneration, Davis was accused of insider trading and can be seen dead in his office chair while files on his computer were being deleted. One of the images that can be seen on his computer screen is the Tricell logo. Notably, a newspaper that was draped over Davis's head had as its headline, Tricell seeking to buy Will Pharma. In addition, workers wearing biohazard suits with the Tricell logo emblazoned on them can be seen retrieving parts of Curtis Miller's body at the end of the film, thereby indicating that Tricell had obtained the G-virus. 2005 appeared to be a busy year for Tricell, as was also depicted in Resident Evil Revelations. Revelations follows the stories of Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine, the protagonists of the original Resident Evil, along with other characters as they embark on another mission to stop would-be bioterrorists. It's revealed during the game that the T Abyss virus was created by combining the infamous T or Tyrant virus with the Abyss virus which was found in a predatory species of fish located in the Kermadec Trench in the South Pacific Ocean, thanks to the efforts of the Montpellier University of Marine Science and Technology Laboratory. Infection with the T abyss virus manifested in a number of ways, including causing infected humans to exhibit substantially increased flexibility, moving through small gaps in pursuit of potential prey. If they are successful, infected humans can be seen sucking the body fluids out of their victims. 
The exhibited characteristics led researchers working on Tiabis to call infected humans the ooze. Throughout much of the game, Chris Redfield is partnered with Jessica Sherowat, a fellow BSAA agent who turned out to be working for Tricell. Jessica's report, part of the Revelations report which was a DVD only available in Japan, features an interview with Jessica that was conducted by Excella Gione, the managerial director of the Tricell Africa branch. More on Excella later. Throughout the interview, conducted one day before the main events of the game, Jessica speaks to Excella about her impressions of some of her fellow BSAA agents, including Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, and other characters introduced in Revelations such as Parker Luciani. Details on known information about the T-Abyss virus were also included in this report. The events of the game play out, and Jessica can be seen in a cafe having been provided with a sample of the T-Abyss virus by Raymond Vester, another character. It can be deduced that Jessica provided the sample of the virus to Trisa. In 2021, the Resident Evil CG series Infinite Darkness premiered on Netflix and allowed fans to witness some of what Leon and Claire experienced in 2006, which included uncovering the truth behind Defense Secretary Wilson being involved in using a virus in BOW soldiers in 2000 during a war that took place in the country of Penamstan. Wilson's decisions resulted in some American servicemen, part of a unit called Mad Dogs, to become infected. The Mad Dogs made it out of Penamstan only to be at the mercy of Secretary Wilson, who provided them with medication to keep their infections at bay while using them to conduct various operations in exchange. One of the members of the Mad Dog unit, Jason, ultimately mutated into a BOW and attacked Wilson, infecting him in the process. We see some time later that Wilson survived this encounter and was provided with what appeared to be some type of medication for his infection by none other than Trisel. Excella traces her roots to the Travis family via her grandmother, boasting not only her family heritage but a high level of intellect as she studied genetic engineering. She became a member of the Tricell's pharmaceutical department at 18 years old. However, her lineage as a member of the Lesser Gione family resulted in her being provided with limited resources in the form of a single research team. However, Excella would soon encounter Albert Wesker, former employee of and traitor to Umbrella. As it turned out, this encounter would prove significant to both Excella and Wesker, with the latter first providing her with information he stole from Umbrella about the T-virus, amongst other things. Excella used this knowledge to accelerate Tricell's BOW development. In addition, Umbrella's downfall occurred at the same moment, and Tricell was able to take advantage of the newly created void to improve their positioning in the BOW market. With these successes, Excella was ultimately promoted to the managing director's position of the Africa branch of Tricell. As one of her first tasks in this new position, Excella directed the restoration of a laboratory in Africa that had been first owned and ultimately abandoned by Umbrella. The purpose of this lab had been to cultivate the progenitor flower, a plant of legend that had been described in Henry Travis's conspectus and had caught the attention of Oswald Spencer. According to Travis's work, the Nidipaya tribe engaged in a ritual that involved a flower, which they called the Stairway to the Sun. The flower was poisonous and killed many who consumed it. However, those who survived the consumption of the flower would become king and were believed to have exhibited superhuman abilities. In 1966, in Chief Scientist Brandon's Diary 1, it had been deduced by Dr. James Marcus, one of the ultimate founders of the Umbrella Corporation, that the flower contained a virus, which had been subsequently named the progenitor virus. Initially, attempts were made to cultivate the flower and reliably obtain the virus in the U.S. These attempts failed, leading Marcus and Brandon Bailey to return to Africa after using up the supplies they had transported. Spencer had ordered that the tribe be forced off of the land in 1968 and that a lab be established in the area where the flower grew in order for the flower and virus to be more reliably cultivated. It would be Brandon alone that would take charge of the facility developed in Africa, as Spencer had tasked Dr. Marcus with running the executive training school in the Raccoon City region as its director. 
Notably, the Africa lab was shut down in November of 1998, as ordered by Spencer, in order to protect sensitive information pertaining to the progenitor flower and virus. And no activity of significance appeared to have occurred since its abandonment until Tricell had sought to conduct work where that lab had been. According to Tricell researcher Miguel's Diary 1, Tricell had already been in possession of the T, G, and T Veronica virus, as well as the Blaga parasite, but lacked the progenitor virus, which was key in the Ouroboros project, aimed at using a virus to effectively select humans deemed as genetically worthy of living on while killing off all other humans. Establishment of a laboratory in this area granted Tricell access to the progenitor flower as well as its virus. Funding for the research to develop the Ouroboros virus hinged on the actions of Ricardo Irving, director of an oil field owned by the Resources Development Department of Tricell Africa. More on him later. Wesker continued his association with Excella, who had undoubtedly developed feelings for him and began to envision her place alongside him after Ouroboros would be allowed to select worthy humans and effectively trigger the evolution of the species. Notably, research pertaining to Ouroboros had hit some stumbling blocks. Much like the progenitor virus from which it was derived, the Ouroboros virus originally exhibited an extreme level of lethality and, as such, had to be adjusted to be a more suitable vehicle for human evolution. Ironically, the tools for this adjustment came from Jill Valentine, former STARS member and subordinate of Wesker who had been captain of the elite law enforcement unit and who led his team to the Arkley Mansion in the forest near Raccoon City under the orders of Umbrella and with additional motivations. After escaping Raccoon City, Jill vowed to fight against those who would promote bioterrorism, ultimately becoming one of the 11 founding members of the BSAA along with Chris Redfield, another member of STARS. Prior to Jill's escape, she had been pursued by Nemesis, a modified tyrant BOW deployed by the Umbrella Corporation to eliminate her due to her knowledge of the mansion incident and the company's nefarious deeds. In one of her encounters with the BOW, she became infected with the T-Virus and was saved by Carlos Oliveira, a member of the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service who was one of the mercenaries deployed by the corporation under the guise of rescuing civilians trapped in the city and, with the exception of some team members, had been unaware of Umbrella's true involvement in the Raccoon City incident. Carlos had secured a dose of the vaccine for the virus and administered it to Jill. This would prove to be a significant event as years later, Jill, now a member of the BSAA, embarked on an operation along with Chris Redfield to track down Oswald Spencer, given the emergence of BOWs throughout the world even after the 2003 collapse of Umbrella. In 2006, Jill and Chris ultimately found Spencer, who had just been killed by Wesker. The duo engaged in a fierce battle with Wesker culminating in Jill presumably sacrificing herself to save Chris from certain death at the hands of their former captain. Jill launched herself and Wesker out of a window. As the BSAA had been unsuccessful in locating her body, the organization declared her dead. This turned out to be incorrect as she has survived the fall, although she had sustained injuries. Wesker also survived and rescued Jill, originally intending her to be the subject of his cruel experiments. Intriguingly, he had vowed to use Jill as his first test subject for the Ouroboros project, but his plans changed when he had detected some abnormalities in her vital signs while in a cryosleep state. He discovered that she had exhibited a mutated form of the T-virus in her body due to her encounter with Nemesis in Raccoon City. The virus existed in a dormant state thanks to the vaccine she had been given, but her cryosleep allowed the virus to reactivate. However, intriguingly, the virus soon disappeared and was no longer detected. Wesker soon discovered that Jill possessed antibodies that likely resulted in the disappearance of the T-virus and used these antibodies to fine-tune the toxicity of the Ouroboros virus. Once the virus had been adjusted to Wesker's satisfaction, Jill's usefulness seemed to have run its course and Jill was not a viable test subject for Ouroboros. However, one of the byproducts of Wesker and Tricell's work on the progenitor virus was the P30 drug, which would grant an individual superhuman abilities and would render the subject highly controllable, but because its effects were short-lived, the drug would have to be continuously administered to the subject to be useful. 
Chris had been partnered with Sheva Alomar, a member of the BSAA West African branch who had vowed to fight against corporations such as Umbrella as her parents had been killed in the destruction of a factory where they worked. The factory belonged to the corporation and had been destroyed in order to conceal the truth about BOWs being manufactured there. The partners encountered many obstacles along the way, a few of which will be discussed in this video. As mentioned previously, Ricardo Irving was the director of an oil field owned by Tricel Africa's Resources Development Department and was responsible for securing funding of the Ouroboros research through deals involving the selling of BOWs via the black market. Cleverly, as he is officially listed as an employee of the Resources Development Department, which is of course distinct from the pharmaceutical department of Tricel, it was possible to hide Irving's association with the pharmaceuticals department that was directly responsible for funding the BSAA. It was because of Ricardo Irving's actions in Africa and the observations of unusual occurrences such as strange animal deaths that the BSAA became suspicious of possible bioterror activity in the area, ultimately working to compile information until they became aware of a deal Irving was trying to engage in involving the selling of BOWs. The BSAA began their operation to act on this intel in March of 2009. Notably, Irving had also been involved in convincing villagers living near the oil field to receive what he had said was an inoculation against a disease. In reality, Irving administered a type of infectious agent called Blagas, which was first depicted in Resident Evil 4. Briefly, Blagas are parasitic organisms that exist in different types with the dominant versions allowing hosts infected with them to continue to maintain control of their consciousness though they exhibit rather dramatic changes to their bodies, and recessive types causing their hosts to be susceptible to control. Tricell experimented with the Blagas to advance strengths and mitigate weaknesses, and some of the researchers' work resulted in Blagas that were called Type 3. Tricell created this type attempting to retain the increased physical ability typical of individuals infected with the dominant strain while mitigating the drastic morphogenesis that accompanied these changes as this would have rendered this agent undesirable for potential buyers. Irving's deception of the villagers would prove deadly, as the Blagas Type 3 resulted in the deaths of all the village women and children. The men were altered by the infection, with many of them quote dressing like their ancestors and fighting each other. Quite a few of the men exhibited visible changes to their bodies, such as substantially increased height. Although the surviving men had also exhibited improvements to their physical attributes, such as a significantly increased ability to jump, the substantial fatality rate and dramatic changes to the men's bodies meant that this field test was not the success that Tricell had hoped for. Interestingly, According to the BSAA Remote Desktop Site, which was intended to be a supplemental website for Resident Evil 5 but was only available in Japan, a personnel file indicates that Irving had been a part of the Raccoon City incident, but details pertaining to this have been lost. Notably, the Remote Desktop Site contains a number of files intended to provide the framework of the recon conducted by members of the BSAA, such as Reynard Fisher an individual with whom Chris and Sheva interact in an early part of the game, in order to obtain information about Irving's deeds in Africa and details pertaining to the BOW deal he had attempted to set up. According to the website, Irving had intended to sell to an American. Other aspects of Irving's background are remarkable. According to a file titled Patrick's Memoirs 3, Spencer had requested that Patrick, his butler, provide information about his whereabouts to Wesker. Patrick had ultimately decided to provide this information to Irving as he had apparently served as an informer to Ada Wong, a female spy who had worked with Wesker. As mentioned previously, Irving's dealings ultimately caught the attention of the BSAA who had sought to apprehend him, but he was aware of their efforts, ultimately using modified forms of the Blagas as well as the Ouroboros virus to take out the Alpha BSAA team that had sought to arrest him and causing the deaths of most of the Delta team. 
The intervention of the BSAA meant that he had been unable to complete a transaction he had set up and had attempted to escape from this failure, but was confronted by a hooded individual who turned out to be Jill Valentine under the influence of the P30 drug. Jill handed him a device containing a dominant Blaga sample and tasked Irving with killing Chris and Sheva. After failing to kill the two BSAA agents by blowing up the oil field, Irving was left with no other choice but to become a monstrosity after injecting the Blaga sample. Irving was unsuccessful in this endeavor and was killed by the duo after a fierce battle. Excella used her position as the director of the Tricell Africa branch and as one of the members of the Pharmaceutical Industry Association which funded the BSAA to influence orders given to the alliance to retreat, presumably to ensure that the Uroboros project would experience no further delays or obstacles. But Chris and Sheva would remain undaunted as Chris, operating on information that Jill may have survived their encounter with West Green 2006, set out to confirm whether this was true. Chris ultimately learned that Jill had indeed survived when he encountered her, Wesker, and Excella. Chris and Sheva worked to subdue Jill and remove the device that had been administering the P30 drug into her system. Jill, now back in control of her actions, urges the duo to pursue Wesker and Excella in order to stop them from spreading Uroboros and causing a worldwide biohazard incident. Chris and Sheva make their way onto the ship that had been boarded by Wesker and Excella. After dealing with heavily armored enemies, the pair ultimately encounter Excella, who had been infected with the Uroboros virus. Unfortunately for the young managing director, her vision of being selected by Uroboros would not come to be as she ultimately perished, transforming into a massive monstrosity and being ultimately destroyed by a laser satellite created by her own company as a precaution in the event that something went wrong with the Uroboros project. Chris and Sheva, having witnessed the horrific transformation of Excella, tracked down Wesker and engaged him in a battle, vowing to prevent the spread of Uroboros. As luck would have it, Jill, having been under the influence of the P30 drug, had been unable to control her actions but had been completely aware of what had been going on around her. As such, she had been made privy to a vital piece of information. During the mansion incident, Wesker had infected himself with a virus given to him by William Birkin, his colleague and ultimate creator of the G-Virus. This virus allowed Wesker to revive after being killed by a tyrant that had been in the laboratory connected to the Arkley mansion. Upon reviving, the star's captain had gained superhuman abilities such as increased speed and strength, but only time would tell how the virus would behave after prolonged infection. Wesker had required a regular injection of a serum in order to keep the virus in check, and although he had just received a dose of the serum not too long before Jill's communication with Chris and Sheva, she informed the duo that administration of an excessive amount would work to poison Wesker. Prior to Excella's death, she had been carrying a briefcase containing syringes with the serum and had accidentally dropped one when surprised by the duo. Sheva and Chris obtained this syringe and ultimately used it on Wesker when they directly confronted him. In a slightly weakened state, Wesker ran to and boarded a plane containing missiles equipped with a supply of the Uroboros virus that would have triggered a worldwide bioterror incident. Chris and Sheva catch up to Wesker, confronting him once again before the plane crashes into a volcano. Wesker appears before the duo, punching a hole in one of the missiles and becomes enveloped by the virus. He engages in a fight with the BSAA agents. Chris and Sheva succeed in defeating Wesker and are rescued by Jill and Josh Stone, the sole survivor of the Delta BSAA team. The duo finish off Wesker for good by shooting RPGs at him. What was Irving doing in Raccoon City? As stated in the BSAA remote desktop, the record pertaining to this has been lost, so details surrounding Irving's time in Raccoon City are unclear. Whether future canon material sheds further light on this remains to be seen. What became of the T Abyss virus in Resident Evil Revelations? At the end of the game, Jessica Sherowat, a mole for Tricell, obtained a vial of the virus and presumably delivered the infectious agent to the company. According to the Biohazard 6 Complete Official Guide and the completion of the new type virus file from Revelations, 
the Teobis virus presented a significant risk of substantially impacting marine wildlife and the ecosystem. This characteristic distinguishes it from other viruses. Intriguingly, the virus had been kept from being sold in the black market. Will the Teobis virus re-emerge in a future Resident Evil title? Only time will tell. What is Tricell's status after the events depicted in Resident Evil 5? In Revelations 2, Claire Redfield can be heard informing fellow TerraSave member Neil Fisher that Tricell was no more, as seen in this scene. Claire, could you, uh... What's up, Neil? Something's going down in Washington. Did you hear anything? What, the new virus? Come on. You know Tricell's history, right? Intriguingly, despite Claire's comments, in-game files indicate that Alex Wesker, the main villain of Revelations 2, had obtained a sample of the Ouroboros virus and conducted experiments with the infectious agent. Therefore, could Albert Wesker and Tricell's work have made it into other hands as well? We'll have to wait for future titles to provide the answer. Have I missed an interesting fact about Tricell? Please leave a comment. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe to be notified when the next episode of the series is uploaded. We can also hang out in my Discord server and during my Twitch live streams. Unless indicated in the video, I refer to the original versions of in-game files, relying on resources such as projectumbrella.net for their translations in order to avoid any localization errors. Once again, I would like to thank Sylvalem's Knight for suggesting I cover Excella and Irving in this series. Catch you guys next time. Thank you.